Hello, this video is um, going to be a run through of pH. Um, it's a huge topic uh, and this will just be a, an introduction to, to the basic concepts underpinning things um, and a kind of focused amount of information to try and get you through uh, a Viva station should this come up. So we'll start off by talking about some important definitions. Uh, now pH uh, actually comes from, uh, is the shortening of a Latin phrase, potentia hydrogeni. Um, which literally translates to the power of hydrogen. Um, many, if not all, physiological processes are affected by the hydrogen ion concentration. And therefore, pH and an understanding of pH uh, is fundamental to understanding physiology uh, and pharmacology. It's often in reference to acids and bases, uh, and so a clear definition of both acids and bases is important. There are different ways to categorise acids and bases. There's the bronsted lowry theory, there's Lewis acid-base theory. Um, but it's, it's not really worth getting too bogged down in any of this. Just have a clear definition. Uh, and the one that is quoted in most textbooks is that an acid is a species which donates protons, so donates H+, and a base is a species which will accept H+, or accept protons. As I said, this is the bronsted lowry definition uh, other definitions are available, um, but uh, this is a completely reasonable uh, definition to give. And moving on to what is pH, well really you need to um, use some mathematics to clearly define pH. And the mathematical definition uh, is that pH is the negative logarithm to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. The reason logarithms are used in this setting is because um, logarithms are, are a good way of describing very, very large or very, very small numbers. Um, and typically, concentrations of hydrogen ions are very, very small in the nanomole per litre range, which is why logarithms are helpful. And it's worth just having a quick recap uh, about logarithms. There's an excellent video on Khan Academy, which goes through this in more detail. But just as a, as a brief aside during this video, um, if we take this phrase here, of the logarithm to the base a of a number b equals c. Well, what does that phrase actually mean? Well, the way logarithms work um, is you're, you're simply stating that the taking the base number, which could be 10, could be e, could be anything you want it to be really, um, to the power of c gives you some other number. So it's saying, if I have the base of a and I want to achieve number b, to what power do I need to raise a2 to get it? So an equivalent phrase is to say that a to the power c equals b. And we can run through some specific numbers to make sure we've understood that. So let's look at log to the base 3 of 9. What will that be? Well, all we're saying is to what power do we need to raise our base, which is 3, to achieve the number 9? Well, we need to square 3, so we need to raise it to the power 2. So log to the base 3 of 9 equals 2. And again, going back to our uh, original generic example here, that's because 3, which is our base, to the power 2 equals 9. And we can go again and we could say, let's use 10 as our base now. So log to the base 10 of 1,000, what would that give us? Well, again, we're saying, to what power do we need to raise 10? to give us this number here, 1,000, and we need to raise this to the power 3. So log to the base 10 of 1,000 is 3. And you can see how we can reduce these very, very large numbers into much more manageable numbers by using logarithms. And that's one of their great strengths. And lastly, we just need to look at a few uh, important rules. There's lots of rules when it comes to logarithms. There's lots of maths going on in the background, but you don't need to know all of it. You just need to know a bit uh, to be able to understand and manipulate the, the pH equation. First of which is, I'm sure will be familiar, so a to the x, uh, any number to the power of x just means uh, a times a times a, x times, so x squared would be just a times a, or x cubed would be a times a times a, etc. But an important thing to note is that a to the minus x, um, which is a term that we, um, that we often see when dealing with small numbers, means that it's 1 divided by that same rule. So if it was a to the minus 10, it would be 1 over a times a times a times a 10 times. 
And thirdly, we need to know that the log of 1 divided by a, so if a is a fraction, that's the same as saying minus log a. So if you had, for instance, log of a half, so log of 1 over 2, that's the same as saying minus log 2. Um, and that's probably a, a, a phrase that you'll have been familiar with from uh, pharmacokinetics. So if we now go back to our pH equation, and then we use a real example, so we ask ourselves, well, if we've got a pH of 7, what does that mean for our hydrogen ion concentration? Well, if we write that out mathematically, the negative log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration equals 7. Now, importantly, this negative sign uh, needs to be considered. And an easier way to, to express this is to bring it over to the other side and to say that log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration equals minus 7. These are equivalent phrases. We haven't done any magic. We haven't done any tricks. It's just a, an easier way to express it because this then allows us to say, using our logarithmic rules, that the H plus ion concentration is 10 to the minus 7, and that'll be in standard index units, which are moles per, uh, moles per litre. Now, if we write that out in full, that's not a, a, um, a particularly useful number, is it? It's 0 0.6 noughts followed by a 1 um, moles per litre. So if we use some um, more appropriate units, we could say that that's uh, 0 0.0001 millimoles per litre, or 0 0.1 micromoles per litre, or 100 nanomoles per litre. So what this is telling us is that a, p a number of 7 corresponds to a real concentration of hydrogen ion uh, in the solution, which is very small. It's 100 nanomoles per litre. And then we could do exactly the same thing with a, starting off with a pH of 8 uh, and then see what that ends us up with in terms of concentration of H+. Uh, so again, we write down our phrase, um, the definition of pH, uh, and that equals 8. We can then move the minus across. What we're doing here is we're essentially timesing both sides by minus 1 uh, to move the, uh, the minus across. We then have to do the anti-log, so that becomes 10 to the minus 8, again using our standard index units of moles per litre, um, which again gives us a, a very small number indeed. We convert that into some increasingly appropriate uh, units in terms of nanomoles per litre, and we see that this gives us 10 nanomoles per litre this time. So if we were to then tabulate that and say, uh, if we compare pHs to uh, hydrogen ion concentration, as we've already seen, a pH of 7 corresponds to 100 nanomoles per litre. If we move to 8, uh, it's a logarithmic scale, so we see a tenfold decrease in uh, H plus ion concentration as we become more alkaline, as we become more basic, and so we've got 10 nanomoles per litre. Physiologically, um, we use 7.4 as the rough marker for physiological pH. Uh, and if we, we do that again, then, then the number comes out at 40 nanomoles per litre. And that's always worth remembering um, in a viva that that might come up to just, just have that 40 nanomoles per litre uh, is the H plus ion concentration at physiological pH um, because that can be tested. Thanks for listening. I hope you found that useful.